The super wealthy are rich for a reason, and it's not because they belong to the Illuminati. But that certainly doesn't hurt. In fact, 88% of millionaires are self-made and never inherited a significant amount of money. So what's their secret? How do they build that wealth? Well, I'm spilling the beans and I'm sharing all their secrets. You can't stop me, Tom Cruise. You're stepping over a line now. Put your manners back in. Secret number one is that passive income equals freedom. You are never truly free until you have disconnected earning money from working. Wealthy people do not become wealthy by trading their time for money. Their money does the work for them, even while they're asleep. How? Passive income. Now there are varying degrees to how passive this income is, but the goal is this. You have income streams that work even when you don't. And those income streams can scale and compound with or without you. Now the absolute most passive income there is, is investing. Once you set up the auto buy of an investment, that's the most work you'll ever have to do. You automatically buy the asset, whether it's S&P 500 index fund or it's Bitcoin. And hopefully if you choose the right assets, they go up over time like magic and therefore give you more money over time like magic. Or you can put in the work up front and have it pay you passively on the tail end. This could be something like creating a digital product or course. And you know, there are actually people out there who sell courses that are all about how to sell courses to make money. That might work. It's just courses all the way down, man. Yo dog, I heard you like some courses, so I put courses in your courses on your courses. Are you too young for that meme? You spend the time to make the thing in the first place, but once it's made, it has a landing page and it has traffic going to it, you don't really have to do anything except for receive the payments. There are a million ways to build passive income streams and it is a long standing secret of the rich. Secret two is to buy assets and avoid liabilities. Now, I've already talked about the most passive income there is, which is just buying and holding assets. But what is an asset and why should you buy it and what's a liability and why should you avoid it first let's talk assets now when most people think about assets they think about things like houses or stocks but in the financial world assets are anything that has the potential to generate income or appreciate in value this could include stocks or etfs or index funds real estate it's free real estate Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, or even collectibles. The key is to choose assets that align with your financial goals. For example, if you're looking for a safer way to generate income off those investments, you can look at things like real estate or buying stocks that pay dividends. If you have a higher risk tolerance, you might look into crypto projects that have a passive income element to them or things like crypto mining. For example, I run crypto nodes on servers that pay me out thousands of dollars per month. And I run Bitcoin miners at a facility that does the same thing. Or if you have an even higher risk tolerance, well then you can fill your entire house full of Pokemon booster boxes. Or sell your house and build a house out of booster boxes themselves. I swear it's an investment mom, okay? No matter what your goals are, there's an asset out there that can help you reach them. Okay, what about liabilities? In finance, a liability is something that represents a future payment or obligation. In other words, it's money you owe. Liabilities can take many forms, but the most common are credit card debt, loans, and mortgages. Now, while some liabilities are necessary or can even be helpful like a mortgage. Others can be a real drag on your finances. This is why you should skip out on unnecessary liabilities if you can. So why should you avoid them? Well, they are a huge risk. If you have a lot of financial liabilities, then you're more likely to go bankrupt if something goes wrong. Credit card debt, for example, often comes with high interest rates, which can make it very difficult to get ahead financially. When you're busy paying for things you owe money on, you have less money to invest. And if things get really bad and you lose your job, then those liabilities can really hurt you. Secret number three is that good debt can build wealth. What? Andy, you just said debt is bad. Okay. Okay, chill out. Daddy, chill. It's easier to say you should just avoid debt than it is to explain all the nuances to it. Now, first off, I don't really believe in good debt or bad debt. Now, sure, credit card debt is typically viewed as bad debt, but I've seen plenty of people use it for good and end up way ahead. But should most people do that? No. Probably not. I'm just simply illustrating the point that it's not the debt itself. It's about how you use it and how you deal with it that matters. Real estate, in my opinion, is a great example of how you can use debt to build wealth because it's unlikely you have $500,000 laying around to buy a house. So instead you get a mortgage, AKA you take out debt. However, that debt buys you two things. One, it buys you an asset, the house and property, and that will hopefully appreciate in price over time this is good. And two, it buys you cash flow. Every single month, you're going to receive rent. Hopefully. So this debt now puts money in your pocket every month. This is also good. Money good. Are you getting it yet? When you use money or even certain types of debt to buy yourself more income, 
you are winning. Winning. This is absolutely a fundamental in the rich person playbook. Secret number four is that inflation kills wealth, so invest. In case you aren't aware or you live somewhere that inflation isn't rampant, here in the old US of A, we have a bit of an inflation problem. Right now, the annual inflation rate is 8.3%. Okay, but what is inflation and why does it destroy wealth? Inflation is when the price of stuff goes up. I mean, that's it, it's not complicated. Usually though, when people are talking about inflation, they're talking about it in terms of the economy. That is when the price of a bunch of things all go up at the same time. This is happening in the US because the government printed too much money and the price of the dollar is going down. But really inflation just refers to the prices of individual items going up. So the price of eggs goes up, that's inflation. If the price of cars goes up, that's inflation. If the price of your yearly subscription to Practical Horseman magazine goes up, that's inflation. This is why inflation is bad for your savings. Your savings is worth less over time. Just not hopefully, you know, worth less. When there's more money in circulation, each dollar is worth less because it can't buy as much. Inflation goes up, but wages usually don't keep pace with inflation. So people's purchasing power goes down. However, there is a big upside to all this and that inflation usually makes asset prices go up. If you own a property, for example, inflation will cause the price of that property to go up over time. The same is true of stocks, bonds, and other investments. So while inflation might eat away at your purchasing power, it also increases the value of your assets. And that's not a bad deal in the long run. It's a pretty good deal. This is why the wealthy buy assets that will go up over time and with inflation, and also why they don't keep all their money sitting in cash, at least for the long term. Secret five is to pay yourself first. But what does pay yourself first actually mean? Put simply, it means making sure you put money aside to save and invest for your future before you start shelling out money on other things. But there are a few different ways that you can pay yourself first. You could automatically transfer money from your checking account over to your investments every single month, or you can make it a point to set aside a certain amount of money for your future self, or some people simply receive their paycheck each month. They invest and save a certain amount right away, right off the bat, and then whatever's left over, they make work for the rest of their expenses. Whichever method you use, the main point here is this, that you're prioritizing investing and saving first. But why is it so important to do that? Well, for one thing, it helps you make headway on long-term financial goals, but it also helps you build up a cushion of cash in case you need it if an emergency happens. And last but not least, it gives you some peace of mind knowing that you're taking care of your future self. Oh, here's a hundred bucks, future me. Wow, thanks, past me. Me. You're welcome, future me. <laughs> Secret six is to always spend less than you make. This is one of the most important tools for those who are building wealth. And it's personal finance 101. The person who makes $65,000 per year spends $40,000 of that on expenses and then takes the remaining $25,000 and invests it is richer than the person who makes $500,000 per year but ends up spending $550,000 per year. That person isn't rich they're broke. And worse off, they're using something to overextend themselves and it's probably credit cards. If you're able to spend less than you make and whatever's left over, invest as much of that as you can, well then you'll be ahead of 80% of people. It's scientifically proven. You can trust me. You know, I'm something, something of a scientist true. myself. I read all your research on nanotechnology, really brilliant. Even better still, if you can spend a lot less than you make and invest most of what's left over. You don't get rich more quickly by investing just five or 10% of your monthly income. Unless of course you make a lot of money. Most people who chase wealth and financial freedom and wanna get there before age 65, do so by investing 30 to 40 or more percent of their income. This is also just a foundational lesson in personal finance. And if you can be disciplined and utilize $65,000 well, well then you can do the same with 500,000. Secret seven is that compound interest is pure magic. One of the most powerful forces we have access to in life is compounding. When it comes to money, compounding refers to the ability of an asset to generate earnings, which are then reinvested to generate even more earnings. This simple concept can have a profound impact over time as the earnings compound upon themselves and create exponential growth. For example, if you were able to save $500 per month into just a savings account with 
0.05% interest rate, you'd only have $120,604 in 20 years, meaning you'd only make $604 after 20 whole years. However, that same $500 per month put into an S&P 500 index fund with its lifetime earnings year over year of 10% would give you $382,848 thanks to compounding after 20 years. Now, in both of those examples, you have spent 120,000 out of pocket. But with the significant compound interest on your side in that investing example, you get $262,848 for free with no additional work just because of the compounding. Disconnecting your time from how you earn money is one of the most important things you can learn from rich people. One of the biggest ways I do that is with my passive income sources. And you can watch this video right here where I show you exactly how they work. And by the way, Tom Cruise, I did submit an application to join your rich person cult, I mean club, but I still haven't heard back. So get back to me. Okay, goodbye.